Welcome back into the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. My name is Sam Hind and today I've got a very special guest with a very special history joining us. I've got John Haynes from Amway Australia and New Zealand coming in to talk to us about his experience in the industry over the past 30 years. John is not only the affiliate leader of ANZ Amway, he's also the head of sales and most recently been appointed one of the directors of Amway Australia and New Zealand. I'm very privileged to be able to have had this conversation with him to talk about how the industry has changed over the last 30 years. And given that he's had this amazing industry experience where he's worked for Amway for so long, he's been able to talk through some of the challenges that he's watched people go through, some of the joys in the industry and the journey along the way. So jump in, have a listen and enjoy. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back on in to the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. As I mentioned, I am super excited about today's guest, John Haynes from Amway Australia and New Zealand. Welcome on in, John. Hi, Sam. Nice to be here. It's fantastic to have you. And as I've just done a little bit of an introduction and told you a little bit about John, as I I asked you earlier, John, you've actually got three titles here because you've just moved into a new role and one of the I'm going to introduce those in a sec but one of the things I'm going to say is that I'm particularly excited about the fact that you've been in this industry but not just this industry but this business Amway for so many years and I want to hear a little bit about that in a sec but this has been quite a journey for you to get to where you're at now. Yeah, it certainly has been a journey, Sam. It's been a 30-year journey uh, all up and um, yeah, I'm still loving it and enjoying the industry and that way, very much. Well, after 30 years, you are now, you've got three titles. You are the affiliate leader of ANZ Amway. You're the head of sales and you're one of the directors of Amway Australia New Zealand. Did I get that right? Uh, yes, you did. And um, yeah, I mean, I really thought I'd, I'd come to a time in my career where this opportunity may have passed me by, but uh, here I am. It's uh, never too late, as they say. Never too late. Well, first of all, massive congratulations because the role that you're in right now is relatively new for you after 30 years of being with the business, but you are now in a brand new role again. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, it's something that I'd always aspired to. And um, I mean, I guess I had, you know, by a lot of uh, previous managers within Amway, I'd been mentored to this role. Um, But, you know, the opportunity hadn't come my way until now. In fact, I work for eight different managers at Amway. So hopefully I can take the best from all of them and um, put that into practice as I now head up the market. Yeah, that's amazing to sort of go through that journey and be where you're at now and something to be um, incredibly proud of and that achievement. And I first got to meet you properly in person, actually, at the DSA conference. What would that be now? Maybe three, four weeks ago? Yeah, Um, yes, it certainly was. And you were telling me this story and I thought it's highly unusual and really amazing to hear from someone who's gone from starting in the industry 30 years ago, as you said, and then working your way through and having sort of this goal, but striving to achieve this goal of, you know, heading it all up. And here you are today and you've done it. Yeah, I, look, I think um, I think grit and resilience p- played a large part in that. It's a bit like building a, a direct selling business, you know, you've got to put a lot of work in and a lot of yards in in the early days, but the, the rewards can be significant. So, um, yep. yeah, and, you know, I never, I never really gave up on this dream. I always really hoped that I'd one day achieve it, but I must admit in the last, you know, couple of years I thought maybe, well, I'm just never going to achieve that, that end yep. goal as it had been something I'd always aspired to and, um, yeah, I'm very excited to have the opportunity to lead Amway Australia and New Zealand. So tell us a little bit about where you started, John. You've given me a little bit of background, but I'd love for our listeners to hear, uh, you know, how did this journey start for you 30 years ago? Yeah, so I, I came to Amway uh, as a buyer from David Jones, um, and I've really only had two jobs in my career. One was with David Jones, and the second one's been with Amway. And uh, I knew an ex-colleague at the time was working at uh, Amway, and I just happened to catch up for lunch. And he mentioned that they were looking for a catalogue buyer because at that time we not only sold a lot of uh, Amway core brand products, but we also had a, a, a big catalogue of national branded um, clothing, food, homewares, home care type products, all, all you know things that weren't 
competing with the Amway brand products. And I joined them because my background was clothing. I used to source a lot of clothing for David Jones overseas, so buying fabrics in in Europe and Asia and then generally having it manufactured Hong Kong, Thailand. Some of the manufacturing, of course, was in also in Europe. And, yeah, very exciting time in my 20s, travelling to all the fashion fairs overseas in Europe. And then I then I came across to Amway because I thought that they were going to move into that area in a in a faster and a bigger way. But they soon announced that they were going to very much focus on their core brand products. And I became the the head of our beauty brand artistry. <laughs> now this was an interesting journey for you, right? Because artistry is your cosmetics division. Would that be the right way of explaining that? Correct. Yes, it's our major beauty brand. And um, it was at the time really when anti-aging was taking off in the marketplace. And of course, a lot of our um, our senior distributors, particularly the ladies, they had some concerns about a man (laughs) uh, coming in to take over the beauty brand. Yeah, um, how'd that go down? (laughs) uh, We had some challenges, but, uh, you know, we had enormous growth because we we embarked on uh, Time Defiance at the time, which was our our anti-aging brand. And yeah, we had great great time, great great growth in the marketplace. So I, I won them all over in the end. So what do you think that you did differently to perhaps what they would have expected? And I'm I'm actually going to have a little guess here that having a male in that role probably would have been of great benefit because you would have come with a totally different set of eyes at that time. Yeah, well, I mean, I think a lot of beauty companies are run by men anyway. And of course, you know, as time's gone on, you know, that whole, you know, millennial man has blurred the lines of beauty and metrosexual and whatever. And, yeah, a lot of men run beauty brands now and a lot of men are using more and more beauty products too. Well, this is true. It's become the new thing, hasn't it? It's okay to put moisturiser on if you're a boy. It is. It (laughs) is. We should talk to Greg about that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, actually, that brings up a question I wanted to ask you. I've thrown a couple of little fun ones in here today and and you inspired me with a couple earlier. But I do want to know what's your... Favorite Amway product because the thing is that you guys have got quite a lot of different divisions to your business. You've got the artistry, which is the cosmetics, and then you've got the healthcare, you've got the cleaning products. Yeah. And um, we also have a few big ticket items like um, air purifiers and, and wow. uh, cookware products, water treatment systems. Wow. But, c- but certainly our focus and the biggest portfolio for us at the moment is, is vitamins. Yep. And second, by that is our beauty lines. My my favourite product is our signature select serum. It's a oh, product that uh, my wife and I we use religiously every day. It, it delivers a personalised approach to a serum, such that you can put in some some vials into the product if oh. it's anti wrinkling or it's hydrating or brightening, um, whatever is the specific need of the customer or client. And it's very high concentration and it penetrates deep into the skin. And, yeah, it's really three serums in one and, uh, yeah, it leaves your skin feeling fantastic. Well, you've got a beautiful glow going on there. I know it might be from the window helping out, but I'm going to say you're ageing well, John. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't expect you to tell me that your favourite product was skincare products, so you did surprise me on that. (laughs) Well, we've got lots of great products at Amway and there's many others that I could talk to as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, our water treatment system you know, delivers 99.9% pure water and, yeah, we've got a lot of great products. I mean, the, the, another great product that we love in our family is our Satiny Care Care uh, range because that's a, a special ceramide infusion system, which right. is a patented system and includes Metafoam seed oil, which is really great for the hair, particularly, you know, in these cold winter you know the winter months where you put a lot of the heating on um, yeah a great product yeah fantastic I actually found it quite interesting that um and what you know Amway I know for many people we we know Amway's been around for many many years it's kind of I remember my parents and grandparents and people getting involved with Amway it's sort of got that real community and history to it as a company and and in many ways it you know it's probably the first business that comes to mind when you talk about this industry people go oh you know Amway I I get it I understand and so my memory of Amway as a kid was probably more the health products and the cleaning products so I was really surprised to see a beautiful modern range of cosmetics with the artistry and um and then the skincare and and now obviously you you 
talking about the water purification system, et cetera. So it's great to see that the business itself is continuing to evolve. And, and this is kind of where I wanted to go with our conversation today is the evolution of the industry. We've seen so many changes happening globally, but we've also seen a lot of changes happen in this industry. Yes, in recent times, but I've got two parts to this question. I wanted to ask you about how has the, the latest change affected you as a company in the last, say, 18 months? What's been your greatest observation over the last 18 months of how it's affected your distributors or you call them independent business owners, IBOs? Yeah, well, look, I, I think it affects everybody differently, Sam. What You know, the pandemic for us has actually been great in terms of sales mm -hmm. because, you know, we have a lot of products um, that, you know, are supporting immunity and healthcare and wellness. Yeah. So that's been a, a boom for us. Obviously, you know, everybody deals with the pandemic differently. Um, working from home has di different um, emotional strings for different people. I mean, I myself personally love the option of, of working from home and going to the office uh, a couple of days a week. We were already going along that direction anyway before COVID yeah. uh, to a flexible working environment at Amway. And, you know, when we did return to the office, um, it was three days a week, two days at home. So yeah. for me, that's a silver lining. But, you know, the staff that report to me in the sales area, they all work uh, remote. We have them out in the different states close to our field. So I've always had a remote field reporting into me uh, as well as some people in the office. So, you know, Zoom meetings, Microsoft Teams meetings, that wasn't new for me to get my head around. Um, I've always been working along those lines for the last decade. It's a great time for me to sort of take over after 30 years as the affiliate leader, especially um, as for Amway Australia, it's our 50th anniversary. Oh, wow. Um, yes, yeah, I did not year. know. Yeah, so it's our 50th anniversary and, you know, I feel very, very privileged to be able to, to lead the affiliate during this year of celebration. We were the first market outside of the US to open. And I'm told the story that they did that because they thought it was farther, furthest away from the US that it could be. And if it didn't work, well, they didn't have to explain to anyone. But it's worked enormously, yeah. It's funny because I feel like I've come in and out of hearing about Amway for all of these years, but it's been going so strong for all this time in Australia. It's just like it, it feels like it's a great big family environment. And in chatting with you the other day, you were saying that You've even got second generation IBOs popping up, independent business owners. So you've got children of parents that are building not just a, a little business, like a career with Amway. Yeah, that's true, Sam. It is a very, um, it's a family sort of feeling within the business. You know, the second generation of the family, Doug DeVos and Steve Van Andel, were running the business until uh, recent times, but they've just last year. Uh, handed over to a uh, new CEO, Milman Pant, who joined us from, from Yum Foods. So that's the first time that they've really handed it out over to an external uh, leader in the marketplace, yeah. which, of course, that's brought a lot of um, change with it and transition. But um, for all the right reasons, I mean, you know, we are going through a, a time of change and transformation in the business world, you know, as we all embrace social commerce and social platforms. The way we operated our business yesterday cannot be the way we're going to operate it in the future. And that's what I really love about Amway is that they invest heavily in terms of reviewing the business and, you know, the direction and the strategy that they need to take it. And they've, they've always been at the forefront of that. Yeah. Uh, the, the values stay the same, you know, the values of the company stay the same, you know, freedom, family, hope and reward are our, our company values. But, you know, the, the end journey it changes because, you know, we have to be true to those values, but we have to take our, our distributors, our senior distributors on a journey sometimes to yeah. ensure that, you know, we stay at the front of the industry. Yeah. This is what we're noticing is is a real challenge. It's it's that people are, have set their business up a particular way and things are changing so rapidly. And I feel like change is happening now a lot faster than what it used to. Would that be fair to say, do you think, that it's yes, yes. And, and, you know, you and I at the DSA conference, we were talking about uh, Michael McQueen and his presentation. Yeah. You know, he's a futurist and he I think he does a wonderful job in the industry as well as outside of the industry yeah. uh, advising companies on what is the future. And his comment really resonated with me when he said that 2020 has brought 2030 into 2020. 
you know, we were always going on this path to digital, but it just accelerated the whole thing. Yeah, didn't it ever? And it, I think for so many people, it's pushed them into doing something that they were really just putting off. They didn't want to go there. And it was that decision between I'm either going to have a business tomorrow or I'm not. It, it's I need to embrace this or I'm out. Well, um, well, that's true. You know, I mean, I, we, we've got senior distributors who, you know, I know we're even challenged by adopting, embracing social platforms uh, as part of their business. And, you know, I used to struggle with well, what, you know, that's how people communicate now, young people especially. Yeah. Uh, and I was always a little bit perplexed. Well, you know, why aren't they embracing it? Some of the older ones. Well, of course, yeah. now they've had no choice really than to, yeah. to get on board. And it's true. You know, we have got some second generation coming through in our business. As yeah, senior you're leaders. telling me about this. Yeah. Interesting thing for me is that I've actually worked with their parents, you know, in years gone by. And here I am now working with their kids as well, which is wonderful. Yeah. What a, an amazing thing to be a part of as well. So what do you think, John, has, is the biggest challenge for your independent business owners now? What are you seeing being a challenge for them at this point in time? I think you've always got to be agile in the business and not complacent. Um, you've always got to be looking forward. Mm -hmm. And sometimes for some people that's a big, bigger paradigm shift than others. Some people struggle with change. As a leader of an affiliate, you've got to be able to inspire those people and inspire your staff as well yep. to embrace change and, and forward thinking. And that's not always, as I said, easy for yep. everybody. How do you go about inspiring your team for change? Uh, I think you've just got to bring out the best in people all the time. Mm -hmm. You've got to develop them and push them a little bit to beyond their normal boundaries. And I'm, you know, I'm a really strong believer that people love to be recognised, um, which is one of the values of our company and yep. really our industry. And always be sure to to recognise people for their self worth and their contribution, and be very yep. grateful for what they they deliver and do every day. So, given that we're in the the times that we're in right now, and being able to recognise people in the way that we traditionally in the past might have, which in this industry, you know, conferences and having in person events was a really big part of doing that. How do you at Amway go about recognising your your field, your contributors, those that are successful in the business to keep giving that inspiration and motivation? Have you found a way to do that that's successful? Well, we, we have a recognition program which goes across a, a number of different platforms and channels. And of course, you know, that's everything from print media, website, acknowledgement, um, right through to our social platforms, Instagram, Facebook, etc. And where we've had trips as part of the reward process, we've paid people an event cancellation okay. fee to recognise that the trip unfortunately didn't happen. But, you know, we're looking forward to the day when we can get back to travelling again. Yep. And, and we run a lot of virtual events as well, virtual meetings um, with our leadership. You know, we have a Amway Live coming up on August the, the 20th where we're going to announce um a, a new tr big trip uh, as we come out of COVID, we hope, Ooh, for, tw yes. for 2022. <laughs> I bet people are getting excited about that. That sounds like great fun. Yeah, well, they are. And, you know, they'd love for me to tell them the destinations, but, of course, that's all confidential till now. Yeah. And <laughs> off Hawaii. <limits>. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, if you could travel anywhere in the world right now, John, if COVID and restrictions weren't a thing, where would you be going? Oh, I, I guess personally I love going to Europe and that, that gives me the opportunity to catch up with my daughter who lives in London. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Europe would be where I'd be heading. Yeah, you were saying that she's been away from you for a little while. She jumped back on a plane and got back here last year, but I was saying it must have been a while since you've seen her being that she's living away in the UK at the moment. Yeah, she's been living overseas for a few years since leaving Australia. She lived in Singapore for a while uh, and then her, her boyfriend enticed her to move to London and that's, <laughs> he's now her fiancé and we... We love having him as part of our family as well. She came back last year because I, I did encounter some um, serious health issues. I had cancer and, yeah, she helped me get through that and she works in oncology in London herself and through some connections she was able to put me in contact with the right people and, um, yeah, life's a journey, as I said. You go through the highs and lows and um, you've just got to stay positive. It's got to yeah. stay positive all the time. I love that. And it's a, an amazing story. You're telling me a little bit about this earlier, but it, it sort of gives that realisation to the fact as well that you, you've gone through this career for all these years and you were saying that a couple of years ago you 
you, you for the first time really kind of thought maybe this is not going to happen for me but these challenges that you've been through must make this time right now even more special for you to be able to sit there in that seat in this role yeah well I, I think at the um the direct selling industry conference we had that great uh, guest speaker Mark Schulman he was the he is the drummer for Pink yes. uh, and his message really resonated with me and it was all about you know attitude plus behavior equals a consequence yeah and I really um yeah really resonated with me uh, having gone through what I've gone through and also you know just to to go through something like that you really feel the the warmth and the value of family and good friends and you know, this whole industry, I, I mean, I was really overwhelmed by the the support that I got from not only friends and colleagues at work, but ex-colleagues and, and the field at large. I mean, it was just it was just amazing. It really is a special industry to work in. And this was my next question, actually. You might have just answered it, but you might be able to elaborate on that. But I was going to ask you, what's your favourite thing about this industry? Because you've been in it for so long, so that it must have a special little place for you. Um, well, certainly the people, you know, I love I love working with people. I mean, I'm a people's person, so I think it's always great to interact with people and we're all different. I love that uh, about the industry. Um, I guess for me, one of the big um, joys of my career has been the opportunity to to see people's businesses evolve from a inception through to, you know, significant global businesses in some case and, and to see the, the, the life's journey that that takes people on um, and yeah. achieve a, a better life. Uh, on a personal level, I mean, I love travel and I, you know, I'm, I'm just very uh, grateful for the number of countries that I've been able to visit during, you know, my time with Amway yeah. and, and enjoy that with many of our distributors as well. Yeah, fantastic. And you've just, you mentioned that you, you've you watched, obviously, lots of people go through the business. You've seen some succeed immensely and build these huge businesses and, and others that sort of come in and, you know, really struggle what would be your observation, you know, if you were to look at what are the things that the characteristics and the behaviours of those that seem to do really, really well versus those that struggle, what would you say would those characteristics be or those behaviours be in your observation? Yeah, um, great question, Sam. I mean, the reality is that thousands of people have joined this business, joined this industry, and in the future, many thousands will again join this business and industry. And some will succeed and some won't. But I, you know, I do believe a lot of it does come down to the effort people put into the business. Yeah. You know, the people who are really successful, they do put in an enormous effort into their into their businesses to make it succeed. And I do think that you know they they do have special. Um, the traits that they're able to influence people and inspire people mm -hmm. uh, and bring bring them on a journey with them. And as it comes down to grit and resilience, you know, you just yeah. got to keep working hard and plugging away. You know, I've seen people also come into our in our business and, you know, they've achieved a little and then they've sort of sat on their laurels for many years and then all of a sudden they take off again. You know, the timing's got to be right for everybody uh, to yeah. invest that time to build their business. Yeah. And it's interesting because we get people that jump into this industry who, you know, want to build a business, but they've never had any previous business experience. But really, you are a little business owner. And so if you were to give a piece of advice to someone who was either thinking about jumping into this business, whether it was with Amway or with a different direct selling business, or someone who has just started, what piece of advice would you give that person to help them kick off on the right foot and get themselves going? Yeah, well, I think everybody has different drivers. You know, some people, they're just happy to earn a few extra dollars to help pay for the bills. You know, some people might want to put their kids through private education or uni or whatever. Yep. It depends. Everybody has different drivers and some people are just happy earning a few dollars, but, you know, some people want hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it depends on what you are. But, you know, my advice is, to, you know, if, if you have an interest in, in the industry or the business, just give it a go and see see where it can take you just look out for each other have a good positive attitude and and yeah. just give it a go because it's a it, it's a low cost business to to have a, a trial at and see if it works for you yeah absolutely certainly don't have the overheads that come with no i mean there's none of there's business. exactly there's none of the major setup costs and you know there's a lot of mentoring that goes yeah. on in the business as well not only from your leaders but also from uh, the company that you're associated i mean at yeah. amway we have a, a huge uh, educational portal 
and a lot of training made available to everyone. Yeah, and you certainly, you guys have spent a lot of time and effort on building that too. I know that that's, uh, that was a huge part as well of last year, uh, watching that evolution of what you guys were doing there to support your field through all of those changes was fantastic. So, John, what's your focus, uh, you know, going forward? You guys are in your 50th year this year in Australia, which is an incredible achievement. Have you got any celebrations planned for this year? You said it was a year of celebration. I know that in-person celebration is not really possible, but what does that look like for you guys as a company this year? Yes, well, we certainly do have a lot of celebration and it goes right throughout the year. I, the first question you asked me there was what my focus was. My, my focus is the customer or, or the distributor experience. I mean, I'm very, I'm obsessed with that. It's got to be a good one. Um, and it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, the product or the delivery or the website or the training or whatever. Yep. That experience has got to be good. And the other thing that I think is, is key critical to the success of, of our business uh, is to partner with your leaders. Yep. You may not always um, have the same thoughts about some of the change, but you've got to be able to sell them the, the dream and the goals where, you, where you're trying to take the company. Yes. And you've got to bring the people on a journey. So you've got to partner with them. And, and you've got to understand that sometimes you're not always going to agree on everything, but yep. at least you can have a respectful conversation. Yeah, that's fantastic. And so how at the moment are you going about doing this? Is this a one-on-one thing or do you have some events planned where you're going to spend time continuing to, I suppose, share that journey and with the field? Sure, sure. Um, well, well, I certainly spend a lot of time doing, you know, one-on-one uh, meetings and counselling um, with our key leaders for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we have a lot of uh, meetings which, you know, different levels in the business depending on what they've achieved. We run, you know, various meetings and, and catch-ups. So I think that's key critical because you've always got to have a, a group of people who can help carry the message uh, for you uh, downline uh, into the into everybody else who's in the business. Mm-hmm. But in terms of celebrating this year, um, we're doing Am I Live, which is uh, an event coming up on August the uh, 20th on Facebook. It's going to be a, a celebration of a lot of uh, achievements of different people in the business. Yep. And we're going to be uh, announcing um, our next big um, Achievers Qualification Trip Incentive. Yes. Uh, we would have announced it this year, uh, 2021, because this really is the year of our, of our 50th anniversary. But uh, because of COVID, we've pushed the, the event back to next <laughs> year. And, and you know, normally we take our people away for a four night event. This one's going to be a seven night event. You're making up for it. <laughs> We're making up for it. Yes. Uh, people are going to be absolutely blown away by it. Oh, and let's hope, is, let's hope I- we can all travel. I think I need to be on this Amway Live because now you've got the anticipation up. I want to know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> sounds sounds fantastic. And, you know, it's really interesting watching how people are adapting at the moment to not being able to do in-person events and finding clever ways of still bringing the community together. Because I know for me, one of the most amazing things about this industry is that community. It's that sense of connection with one another. And, you know, whether it's between people in the field it's it really is quite unique and the fact that we haven't had in-person events has taken away from that beautiful community aspect but watching how various different companies have stepped up to the plate and said you know what let's just come up with something different let's find a way to keep that community and that connection going is is awesome and so you've got your Amway Live that you're doing have you incorporated any other ways of keeping the connection in the community between those in the field together over the last, say, 12, 18 months? Yeah, as I said, we, you know, we have a lot of um, virtual meetings that we've yep. also been holding with both leaders and, and staff. I mean, you've got to stay connected to your staff as yep. well. Similarly, we, you know, with our 50th anniversary, we've got a whole series of things that are, are playing out to uh, reward and recognise the contribution of our wonderful staff uh, yep. to the business. So, yeah, uh, you know, a celebration of of some of the history of some of our IBOs uh, in the business, how they've been around for, you know, since the inception, some of them, but also to celebrate a lot of the new ones. You know, and the other other night I had a recognition dinner for a new emerald in our business uh, and at the table was a a young downline guy. He was in his 20s in Mm. their group. 
he told me that, you know, he works in a bar uh, from midnight till dawn. He um, also is studying to be a chef a couple of days a week and then he had a day job a couple of days a week and then he was doing Amway. Oh, my and goodness. I, and I said, how, how do you fit the Amway business into everything else that you do? And, and then this is the new Amway. He said, I do it all online. Yeah. He said, I do everything online. He said, I hold my, my meetings, my prospecting meetings, my training, everything's online. I, I demonstrate the products, do testimonials. I, I get all my ordering. It's all done online. And I, I think, you know, it really resonated with me because I thought, wow, this is so different from where we all were 30 years ago. But yeah. it was a really face-to-face operation uh, and now it's taking off in a new direction. And this is the thing is I think back to where it started 30 years ago, it was very much what we would call belly-to-belly. It was this person-to-person all of the time and then that has moved or morphed very much so into a, a situation where people are now making a decision, do I ever do any belly-to-belly or face-to-face or do I just go 100% online? And we're seeing a big gap between those that, you know, really, um, I suppose, have been around in the industry for a long time and want to stick with what they knew. And those that are coming in brand new now, like this guy that you're speaking of, that is coming up going, well, this is the this is the new way of doing things and it's just how I'm going to kick off and roll. So yeah. are you still seeing some people being super successful by doing it the way that they've always done it? Or are you seeing a big shift now where it really is, you know, there has to be a big change for those no, I, th- I think, but you know, both were, you know, I mean, there's another uh, young guy in Melbourne, you know, he's an emerald in our business, uh, and he he runs a lot of entrepreneur meetup groups. Oh, yes, you, know, you were telling and that, me, and that's how he, you know, builds a lot of his network. So, yep. a lot of that's still face to face where they get together yep. and they network and they share, you know, ideas on what they're doing and what they're involved in. and. Mm. And then, you know, many of them join the Amway business as well as a byproduct of that. So, um, yeah, I think, look, whatever works for you. It's you know, finding no, your way, isn't it? And, and that's, you know, the, the whole Amway business, that there's no right or wrong way to build the business. You know, many people come in, they focus on health and wellness or weight loss. Some focus on beauty. Um, some are more generalist and focus on our, our complete product range. But, yeah, there's no right or wrong way. Yeah, and I think that's what's really beautiful about it is that you can find your way, your method of doing things, your way of connecting, and and that's what makes it such a special industry is it can work in so many different ways. So a couple of little fun questions here for you, John. We were talking about this before, so I know the answer, but our listeners don't. So I want to know, we were talking about books and podcasts and audible books and things like that, and we all know that one of the most important things to to growing yourself, both in your career and personally, is to be constantly learning. And I asked you if you've read any good books lately, and you said, well, as a matter of fact, I have. Do you want to share? Uh, yeah, so I've, I've been reading a book called Killing Time by Jimmy Barnes. Um, I've read a few of his books. My wife's a, a big fan of, of his as well. I, I do but, like good old Jimmy. He's the- yeah, and I mean, what I really like about uh, his story is, you know, he's come from very humble, you know, background. Um, and, you know, he's been able to achieve great things through his dream and passion for music. Yeah, very yeah. interesting read. And I thought it was actually really interesting that he's just recently released a new album too that he recorded in isolation with his family during COVID. Did you hear about that? Yes, I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah which is pretty amazing. It's taking a difficult situation and saying, right, wait, let's make some lemonade now and off he went and, and he actually yeah. wrote, uh, wrote an entire album while in isolation with his kids and his wife, which was just beautiful, and they actually recorded it uh, in their house. So um, you, you get to see the footage of them recording this and, and doing it in their own home, which is great. Yeah, yeah. Good old well, Aussie, Aussie attitude yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Battling through. So now we've got some fun questions here. If you were a superhero, John, you know the answer to this question, who would you be? Uh, I would be Superman because, you know, I, he's able to achieve great things at remarkable speed. And I, I must admit I get a little bit impatient sometimes. I'm, I'm uh, generally full of a lot of energy and forging forward. So, yeah, I'd be Superman. Yeah, yeah. You sound a lot, a lot like me. You get frustrated when things just, you know, patience is, <laughs> is not a virtue. <laughs> yeah. And so I've already asked you about travelling anywhere in the world and you'd, you'd head over to Europe. Um, of that may or may not be a possibility in the near future. But 
You also said to me that you have a, a personal motto, which I think has been speckled all the way through this. So do you want to share that with us? Yeah, my, my motto is life is a journey. You know, you just have to roll with it and make the best of the situation that's at hand. Uh, and, you know, that's what makes it all exciting at the end of the day because you never know where, where it's all leading to, do you? And if you did, it wouldn't be quite as exciting. So, yeah, nice. life's a journey. <laughs> that is all very true. Now, just as we wrap up, John, I'd love to hear from you. You've got to this point now in the business and this has sort of been your goal since day one. Um, what's next? What's next after Amway? <laughs> well, well, what's next? You've got to the top. Where are you going to go now? Uh, well, I mean, I'm obviously here for a few years now um, <laughs> doing what I love. Uh, and I guess after that, beyond that, you know, I am at the end of my career. I guess I've got to acknowledge that and I'll probably retire. And But I don't think I'll ever retire and do nothing. But, you know, that's that's a way off yet. I mean, this is a... This you've is got a, many this is years like a, in this seat now. You've spent 30 years getting here. You're not going to let it go in a hurry. Ex- exactly. I, f- I feel like I've been reborn, actually. <laughs> Uh, it's really awesome hearing about your story, John. I really appreciate you sharing that with us today. And it's really beautiful to hear from someone who's been so passionate in their role and had a goal. And you've just gone out there and said, you know what, I'm I'm going to get it. And you've, you know, it's, I, I can see it's not been an easy journey, but I love that you've stuck at it. And it's, I really appreciate you sharing that with us today. So thank you. Thanks, Emma. And I think you've also, you know, you've got to stay young at heart as well. I mean, you know, some people, you know, they they as they get older, they become older, and I think you've always yeah. got to stay young at heart. And I think that's what's great in a business. You've got to surround yourself with some good young people as well to to keep the good energy and balance going. Yeah. So how do you do that? I mean, are you surrounding yourself by young people or do you have some things that you do to keep yourself young at heart? Are you out there surfing on the weekends? <laughs> no, I'm not out there surfing. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I try to keep fit and, you know, I I, I walk a lot. and. I like music and I love eating and traveling and yeah, I'm out there. Doing all those things. And this is one of the things that I think is really powerful is making sure that you're always feeding your own values because the moment where you you stop worrying about what's important to you, I think every everything else suffers for it. So yeah. you know, I, I really believe you've got to make the most of every opportunity and yep. every stage in life. And, you know, I really I love being with a lot of our younger distributors and we've got a lot of young under 35-year-olds joining our business now. Mm-hmm. And it's always uh, in, you know, inspiring for me to hear, you know, how they build the business and what yep. their goals are and, yeah, they're, they're, they're slightly different to the older generation in the way <laughs> that they think and what motivates them. But, you know, it's important to know and understand that too in terms of the future journey of the business. Yeah, absolutely. What's been what's your biggest observation about the young ones in comparison to maybe the older generations? Uh, I, well, I mean, I think one thing that we've really got to be remind ourselves of is to stay very agile and, and a, mm. embrace change very quickly because yeah. they don't seem to have the patience to to stick at things if they don't see quick rewards. So that's we've got to be mindful of that in the industry. Mm. Yeah, I think we're going to be mindful of that just across the board. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can see even just my kids. You know, you're watching them growing up, and you're thinking, you know what? I just it's a whole new world now. Watching the way that they're behaving in school, etc., compared to the way that we did things. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I think. But I, you know, I also love the fact that you know they really value sustainability. Of, of, you know, they do, don't they? Yeah, and community values and all, and that's that's a that's a good thing. Um, yep. So you know, we've got to, as a company, um, be very much focused on that as well. Yeah. Um, and we we are at Amway. You know, we've in the last eight years we've donated over one point two million dollars to to local charities. I mean, just uh, last month I did a stint with some of our staff at Oz Harvest. Uh, oh, yep. Handing out different food parcels, and we also work for Heart Kids as well, um, yep. and help them. So. Yeah, and that that resonates, you know, very very well with the younger generation. Yeah, awesome. And how endeavors. do you decide, you know, the where um, you're donating this money? You're obviously doing these activities, etc., within Australia. Yeah, well, we do. We have a board um, that administers, you know, where where our donations will go. Generally, we we do try to keep a lot of our donations uh, globally focused on children's uh, charities, such as yep. Heart Kids. Uh, you know, we've also done work with Westmead um, Children's Hospital Neonatal Clinic, uh, 
you know, fibrillators and different um, equipment down there that they need. Yep. Uh, and, and through our, our Power of Five, which is a global program, um, you know, we give something like half a million um, meals to children a, a year uh, and we yeah. donate milk. We donate vi- vitamins to uh, yep. uh, malnourished uh, kids in different parts of the world. So, yeah. Yeah, amazing. Well, thank you so much, John, for sharing with us today. I really appreciate you coming in and, and being a, a guest on the podcast. And, yeah, thank you for being so generous w- uh, with your time. It's been great chatting. Thanks, Sam. Really enjoyed the time with you today. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks so much, John. Have an awesome day. And bye for now, everybody. We look forward to chatting with you again next week.